Is it still worth buying a Birkin in 2022? That's what I want to talk about today. This is a size 35 Togo Noir Birkin with palladium hardware that I bought in Paris about five years ago, back in 2017. It's a beautiful bag. It's never one that I've swapped into and then used for a week or two at a time, but it's a bag that you can use for a day or two at a time. It's just not got the versatility of some of my other pieces and also we'll talk about why I've started to use it less over the years as we go through today's video. And I want to give you my honest opinion as to whether or not these are a total waste of money or if it's still worth getting your hands on one. So point number one to consider is the quality. Now if you are a bag collector, if you're a luxury bag lover, then they are exceptionally good quality, I'm afraid to say. I want to tell you to save your money and go do something else with it, but they really are beautiful bags. This one is a few years old and yet you can see the leather still looks beautifully new, the hardware is stunning, the seams on it are something to behold. I absolutely love the quality of this bag and I don't think you can beat it. Particularly when you look at issues like price now, let's come to that as point number two, the price of this is now similar to a Chanel flap and I don't think the quality is comparable. I've broken bags in Chanel, I've been that person who's picked up, it was a cocoa handle and the strap just snapped off in the middle of the boutique and unfortunately it was the day, I've talked about this lady before, but there's a lady who works in the Manchester boutique who is convinced that I'm stealing every time I go in there and I literally picked it up <laughs> and this chain snapped off and she looked at me like, you Neanderthal, <laughs> how could you do that? But the quality is really poor, there's been multiple pieces that I've been brought out at Chanel that are pre-damaged before you've even purchased them. You don't get that with Hermes bags. Hermes other products I don't always find to be of the best quality. This is a cushion that I bought a few years ago for 400 and something pound and about two days after I got it home this defect emerged in the fabric and I've also seen issues with their costume jewellery as well. But when it comes to the bags, the bags are exceptional and beautiful and if you just love this stuff for the price now, I would say it's worth it. But do bear in mind that if you want to experience Hermes's amazing quality, you don't need to buy a Birkin or a Kelly. They have other bags that you can buy in store. Their online selection is never the best, but in the boutique, you can request a whole wide range of different bags that you don't have to play silly games to get. But the big benefit of having a Birkin or a Kelly is that when you walk out of the boutique, you have money in the bag. If you're somebody who's going to look to resell later, that is a very big factor. But for me, the reason that I went for the Birkin is one, I'm not going to deny it. I bought into the hype and I'm glad I did. It worked for me. It's a really big deal for somebody who loves a bag to get a Birkin or a Kelly. And I'm not going to pretend that it wasn't. I loved it. I loved all the hype of it. I loved playing the game a little bit because I did it in a way that suited me. But I also really particularly love the shape of the Birkin. I love the Kelly lock, but there are other bags in the boutique where you get the Kelly lock you get the good quality, you maybe just don't have the same residual value when you then go to sell on. The Hermes game, you can't talk about a Birkin without talking about the palaver it takes to get hold of one and this silly game, as much as I find it very distasteful and it's one of the reasons I don't particularly love Hermes, it is also the reason that I think they maintain their value, it's the reason that their resale is so high, it's the reason that they have a little bit of mystery and something else about them that separates them from the pack of luxury goods. I hate the game personally, I think it's incredibly unkind. I, I just hate the fact that in order to get the bag they have to come up with this game that makes some people feel awful about themselves. Look at some of the videos that came out last year from people who were trying to get hold of these bags and questioning why they don't get one. People do crazy stuff, and yes, it's bags, and people have their own personal responsibility to behave in reasonable ways, but we're all unreasonable at times. So there's two different games you can play to get hold of the Birkin. One is the Paris game, which I personally have no issue with, that's how I got hold of mine. You apply for an appointment, you get one or you don't. There's no big mystery to it. You really want an appointment, I managed to get one on my third attempt when I got this, and I didn't manage to get one this time when I went to Paris with the girls. None of us did. I think, how many of us were there? Were there six of us or seven of us? All applying for an appointment every day. None of us got an appointment. It is hard to get an appointment, but if you get one, you get to go and ask for a Birkin and you can just be offered one. That's a game I'm happy to play. It's a bit of fun. And if you don't get one, you get a trip to Paris. The other game, the game I can't stand, is the game where you try and buy enough stuff or build up that relationship or you're deemed worthy of buying a Birkin. I want to tell you now about three experiences I've had that really make this whole game seem like a total sham. The first one is that I met someone a while ago who I knew for a long time. They weren't a close friend, but they always used to laugh about my bag addiction and say they weren't going to buy all those bags, they were just going to go and get a Birkin because they wanted to look rich. 
So they walked into the Hermes boutique, they got their name down on a list and they would get a call every time a Birkin came in that maybe other people had rejected and they'd been offered four or five Birkins. They had no sales history with Hermes, they didn't buy luxury goods, they knew nothing about the bag whatsoever and yet they were offered bags. You can do that. It just depends on who you talk to in store. The second experience that I've had is that a few years ago I was in a boutique. I don't know exactly what happened. I was looking at scarves. Basically Mark had said he was going to get me a scarf for, I think it was my birthday, and I said no, there was something else I preferred. So I was looking at scarves and the sales assistant must have thought I said something or she overheard somebody else and thought I was speaking or she was talking to the voices in her head, I really don't know. But she snapped at me really loudly in front of a room full of people saying, we don't have any Birkins or Kellys. I was like, okay. I was looking at a scarf, but it's good to know. And I remember watching the colour literally drain from her face and her, I think she realised what had happened, whatever that might be, and she wanted to show me other things. <laughs> and I just thought, I really want to leave. <laughs> I feel really uncomfortable and a little bit embarrassed right now. But she insisted and I thought, right, she's trying to compensate, that's fine. I'll just look at whatever. I'm not in any hurry, I'm looking in here, I'm having a chilled out day, it's fine. So I looked at some other stuff with her and she insisted on taking me to the shoe area, which was completely empty. And we went to look at shoes and she said to me, if you are interested in bags, we do actually have something in that might be to your taste. And I, I said, no, I don't want a bag. I don't have any money for a bag. I, I don't know what's happened or what happened downstairs, but I wasn't asking you for a bag and I left. So there were bags in, even though she was keen to tell me there weren't, even though there were. Anyway, very awkward. But I'm sure the people who work at MS get just as frustrated with this whole system as we do. And then the third experience that I had, and I didn't like to mention this previously because it's just not very nice. But on the day that I got this one, I was in the boutique in Paris and the old system, the appointment time that you got to go and talk about getting a bag, kept moving backwards and forwards by like half an hour or 20 minutes. So I thought it's safest to just stay in the boutique and wait for my appointment. And while I was in there, I have no decorum, so I listened in on other people's appointments. And I remember this couple who were so keen and looked so cute. And they just said, we want a Birkin or a Kelly. And they said, what size do you want? And they said, any size, what color do you want? Any color. And they said, oh no, we haven't got any Birkins or Kellys in today. And I was gutted. I thought, oh no, I've got my appointment coming. They're not going to offer me anything. And as you know, if you watched my video, I was offered more than one bag. <laughs> I got to try on more than one bag. So they definitely had some in. Now, based on what we hear on YouTube, you'd think maybe they declined that other couple because they weren't being specific and because maybe they were resellers. But I don't think that's necessarily the case. Some people are just excited about this stuff and don't know the specifics and I don't think it should be a test. And yeah, maybe fair enough, sell this stuff to people who love it more, but I don't think from what I've heard over the years that they do that. I think it's just who you bond with. I have no doubt they decline people for no reason. But all I want to say is if you have been declined a bag, don't worry about it. It's nothing you've done wrong. Goodness knows how they pick who they give a bag to. But I don't think it's really based on anything that you're doing. I think, yes, it's better to be specific. It's nice to show a love of the bag. But I think even if you went in asking for a very specific bag, you might get rejected for reasons. Goodness knows. As I've mentioned in a previous video, I like to read psychology stuff every so often. I don't know why. I'm not a psychologist. But there was an article I was reading a while ago about how people who buy luxury goods often have low self-esteem and use this stuff for validation. And I can just imagine people being rejected for these bags and then feeling like they're not good enough. And that's really not the case. It's a horrible system. And in a world where we're all preaching about be kind, I think it would be nice and more elegant of Hermes to have a nicer, more open system. I totally get why they don't. Hermes is often talked about separately because it is in a league of its own. And I think it is in a league of its own based on quality alone, but the game does give it this extra air of mystery and excitement. I just don't think it's very nice. And I don't back Hermes more because I find the way that they operate so distasteful. And I guess you could take the viewpoint that carrying one of these means that you have been prepared to jump through a load of hoops and be treated badly by a boutique to ultimately be offered a bag that may or may not be the combination that you really wanted, which doesn't look great for you. <laughs> But let's move on to the next point, which is size. I've gone for the size 35 here, which I've never regretted because it's really big. You can fit loads in here and I'm a big bag person. Also, when you go to the size 35, it's slightly more square in shape. And this, particularly on a curvy body, is a bit more flattering. And it's a slightly younger look sometimes, not always. But I really love the shape of this. When you move down to the 30, I think the 30 is generally a better size. You can still get a lot in there. It's more 
comfortable to carry because it is lighter in weight but it's a bit more kind of chopped off in shape more rectangular and that wasn't flattering on my body shape and that's why I didn't buy the 30. When you go down to the 25 that's adorable I think that's a really nice little evening bag and because of the size of the hardware on the bag in general it just looks very pretty and delicate and I think that makes a really nice evening bag but generally I'm really happy with my 35 I just think the 30 is a great shape it's just a bit too rectangular for me. I guess the truly awkward thing about the sizing of these bags is you can't just go in and try one on and see what works for you you have to wait till the day and then you can only try on what they're happy to show you. So this as I say, it's a great day bag. You can fit loads in. It does the job perfectly. The size 30, I think, is a kind of all-rounder. I think it's smaller, so you could use it as an evening bag. It's still quite bulky as an evening bag. But then, as a day bag, it's also not got the depth that you've got on this to really fill it up and use it so that's my again my issue with the 30 I do think it's a cuter size I do think this is massive but <laughs> that's just my preference then the 25 is adorable the 25 is just so cute and I would totally buy that <laughs> the biggest thing that would put me off buying a Birkin nowadays is the fact that it's become a much more recognizable bag back in the day it was great nobody knew what they were you could take this out without fear that somebody was going to steal it from you or worrying about where you're going where we live here, there's a lot of people with a lot of luxury goods and I've heard of spikings happening for 50, 60 year olds on nights out for their luxury goods is what we all assume. We've discussed it in depth, but it does happen. You need to be careful with your stuff. And so I worry when I take this out more than ever. So that is a big consideration to have in place. Also do make sure that your bag is insured. I had to change insure in order to insure this bag. More people know how much this stuff costs and it is more in your face than it's ever been. And I think at a time now in the world where a lot of people have had their values shaken over the last few years and a lot of people now are financially struggling, they do seem a little bit more distasteful. And the Birkin epitomizes that excess, I think, when it comes to handbags so I don't like that association with the bag but still I don't not use my stuff because of what other people will think I think that's as bad as buying something to impress people as to not use your stuff when you enjoy it I've talked about this before as well I know I say it shouldn't affect how much I take it out but it does in the past I used to love it in Selfridges when I would take this out and people would come up to me who knew bags and be like oh I really like your bag and in the same way I used to go up to other people sometimes it was always in Selfridges in Manchester that's where I used to see them all the time and I would say to people I really like your bag now if somebody comes up to me when I'm carrying this I think they're going to mug me <laughs> so it's not quite as relaxing and when I take it out I went to a birthday party at the weekend for a three-year-old. This would have been perfect for Henry. I could have put shoes, clothes, everything that we need in it. And I didn't take it because I didn't know the people I was going with. And I thought, I don't want to look like that mum who's trying really hard to look like I've got a load of money because um, I don't <laughs> and I'm not trying to foister that on people and I do feel that association with this bag at the moment really strongly. I've heard it referred to as the Nouveau Riche bag and I totally get why and that stops me taking it out a lot because I used to use it a lot more than I do now and that's because I enjoyed it because I wasn't self-conscious and now I feel like I'm trying to impress people when I take it out or I feel like I'm trying to be something that I'm not when I take it out and I don't like that association. Obviously that's all in my own head but it does stop me taking it out when I've got lots of lovely other bags that I can take instead although they're just as bad <laughs> sometimes now. I really don't like this association that's come on to luxury bags. In the past, nobody had a clue how much they cost and I enjoyed them so much more then because I didn't feel self-conscious because I could just enjoy them and thought they were cute and well, I could look at them when I went out and I didn't need to tell everyone what they were unless people asked them that I really enjoyed talking about them. But I really love luxury bags. I just don't love the associations that they have right now. I think at a time when a lot of people are struggling financially, taking these out to certain situations can just be a little bit gauche or a little bit inconsiderate. But at the end of the day, it's a handbag. But it's got big associations. That's why it's a big deal. <laughs> the thing with the Birkin is that it is super understated. That's what I love. It's like a briefcase. It's incredibly simple. And I actually really love the look of this bag. But you do get people who buy it saying, I don't like the look of it, but it's a Birkin. Each to their own. Anyway, that is it for today's video and I would still buy a Birkin in 2022. I think if you love bags, it is the beautiful quality that sets this apart. It's a lovely bag. It's very subtle. I'm hoping that luxury handbags will fall out of mainstream fashion favour very soon <laughs> so that we can all just get back to being weirdos together. I think they're beautiful. I think the quality is exceptional. It's the seal across the top. It's the feel of the leather. The hardware is stunning. I love that it's a little bit fiddly. It's a beautiful bag and you can't knock it.
I just don't particularly like the way the brand conducts itself and I don't like the associations with it at present, but neither of those things relate to the bag that I actually have in my hands here right now. Those things might change over time. And ultimately, the bag itself I think is totally beautiful and as much as a luxury bag can be worth its price, especially given the price increases, a Birkin totally is. So I love it. If you want to get one, I would totally recommend going for it. They are lovely, lovely bags. And I will see you guys very soon in my next video. <laughs> Bye.